Okay, um, y'all seen last night the oil pan episode. I, I, I'm going to let you take one more look at the pan. It did give me a fight. When I went to put the pan on there, I had to, to modify the pickup after it had been welded. I had to move some stuff around. I can show you the measurement. I might take just a second here and show you how I do it. But what I wanted to point out right now, remember me telling you about the timing chain and the cover? Well, you're looking at the first time in 20 years of doing these motors that I've not had to beat the timing cover. What happens is, in order to get the correct clearance on the roller, I don't use nothing but the needle bearing anti-cam walk button in the comp plate. When you go to put it on there, okay, it won't go flush. Look at this. I put it on there and I didn't feel anything. What happens most of the time, it'll either push out and I have to turn it around and beat it or it's not touching it and I'll have to take a hammer and beat it. It felt so close that I took my hand and did a couple of pops and uh, pulled it off and you can lightly see where it barely touched it. So when I put the gasket on here, it's going to have about 15 to 20 thousandths and that's the correct movement of anti cam walk. Now, I can't tell you how many so-called performance motors that I've took apart over the years and have high dollar stuff in it and not have that cam button. Let me tell you what this cam button is. The cam button extends the life of the timing chain double fold. When, that, when the cam going back and forth because of the way the cam gear is driven off the distributor, what happens is it's constantly trying to push out of the block. Okay, by putting that cam button in there, it's keeping this chain straight and this is a damn tier one timing chain. The Roller Master with the German uh, chain and the Australian cut steel billet gears and I've got the perfect measurement and uh, that cam button is going to really do its job on preventing the cam wall but I did not have to do this timing cover. This is a factory GM timing cover a uh, high dollar item. Anything as you know with GM on it's better but look what it did. It cleared it. So anyway I just wanted to go over that and uh, the other thing I wanted to show you might try to get you a little bit better camera angle here. I wanted to show you what a what a tantrum I had getting this damn pan on here. We're lucky enough tonight that Mr. Holder Boulder himself is here. Uh, he's been in here on and off through the whole thing, setting it up and blueprinting, and uh, I was just wanting to show him what a, uh, a, a fight I had with that pan. But while I got you here, Troy, um, I'm going to let you talk to the customers, tell them what you've seen during the blueprint process, assembly, setting up and everything to where we're at now and how you feel about it. I'm going to hand it to you. Well, I've known Tony for 20 or so years, and we've always talked about doing a motor together, and either one of us, you know, lose contact every now and then sometimes, but really didn't have the money, you know, at the time, but finally got into a position where I could afford to build a motor, and I decided to do it in a boat motor, and I never realized the time that goes into a motor. You hear all the time, I can build a motor in an hour and throw it together. Yeah, you can. But the way Tony sets these motors up and the, makes sure all the clearances and triple and quadruple checking everything is just, it was kind of getting on my nerves, but I know what I'm getting. The last motor I had built, it was a disaster. And he's done a wonderful job. I've been, you know, very patient with it and I've done everything he's told me to do on this motor. Because when I put this in this boat motor, I want it to be in here because it's a pain in the butt to take it out. But he has done a wonderful job, very tedious stuff, and very happy with what I got. He does excellent work. I, I don't know what else to say about it, but it's, it's a beautiful piece. Well, you sure didn't seem that way the other night when you found out I had a piston ring upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you'd catch it after the third check.
Yeah, that's actually when I caught it. The next morning I come out, I have a list. I went back and checked everything the night before and I had the top ring upside down. But that's why you have that checklist and you do it. Um, and right now I'm at the point where I've got 30 hours of labor to what you see right here. Now that includes the blueprinting, checking of clearances, fitment and everything and at this point here honestly I've got about 10 hours to go typically it takes me 40 hours to assemble the motor because it's actually put together and taken apart what three times we've had it you've been here when it was done twice we had to do the degree on the timing and that was something I wanted to say also uh, this camp I, the hardest thing I've had to do is keep in my mind boat not car boat because uh, of the exhaust manifolds, the water running through it, and we ended up degreeing the cam in at 109.5. That's a good radio station, by the way. Uh, and with that right there, uh, it'll, it's going to have a half a degree of stretch. It'll come in at 110, and I talked with Chris at Engel, and that was exactly what he said. I was going to think of maybe about throwing a couple of degrees advanced to it, but when he pointed out, dude, you're playing with water in the manifolds, I kind of stopped for a second. So um, I, this whole project, y'all, I know a lot of people are saying, why not build a 383? Why not a 400? Here's why. I'm going to let Troy tell you real quick. Why did we have to go to a smaller motor instead of a big one on this build when we spent the same money that we could have done it? Well, it's an 89 boat, and it has the uh, Alpha 1 outdrive, and it's, it's not a real beefy outdrive. So I didn't want something that was so snappy that it would you know tear the outdrive up you know break the the shaft off or i wanted right. something that, that come in smooth and then get into the you know the rpms around 35 to 4 where it would take you know less strain off the outdrive and of course you get out on the water you start drinking too <coughs> you know you want to throttle even harder so you know we set it up where we can't hurt ourselves with it. Yeah. It, right. I'm still going to have to be careful with it. And we'll have an MSD with a rev control and all that. But still, like you said, we made a governor out of the motor itself. Right. By having 305 inches and the smaller bore diameter, even if somehow he hits it hard, it ain't going to bring a delivery like a 383. It will haul ass regardless of what some of you out there think with the 400 crank, not to mention a 1480 bob weight. That is what has blowed me out of the water. Now, I know the piston is smaller but still you guys know with a bob weight like that this thing is going to be a buzz bomb we even went to the trouble of putting him what them hundred and thirty dollar lightweight pins in the pistons and balancing the rotating assembly so but that's why we didn't want to put something on there that would be so harsh it could hurt the drive plus the other thing when i told him this by going to the turtle and that special spacer that was given to us by, um, uh, what is it, uh, Quick Fuel Technologies, they really worked with us on this project, which we're going to be into that. Uh, we got an open plenum manifold that I will guarantee you, it's a shame we can't dyno the motor because I will guarantee that we have suffered almost zero bottom end loss, but we're going to have mid range and top end. And the whole, one of the main goals was to have it where it got the equivalent of over 20 miles to 22 miles to a gallon of gas. Yeah. Uh, his dream, of course, what Troy told me would be he filled it up on Friday and didn't have to fill it up again till Sunday. Now, I don't know about boats, so I don't know if you're in dreamland or if that's real uh, wishing. <laughs> with, with four cylinders, maybe. But uh, hopefully we can get that out of it. Right. That would tickle me to death. Yep, to have it all in your cake and eat it too and have the power and go fast. Uh, really, to be honest with you, this motor is a lot of overkill, but I do build my bottom ends and my stuff that way because my thought has been since I was in California and was educated out there, build a street motor like you build a race motor minus compression and cam lift. And then you've got an engine that will live forever. All right, we're going to stop for a second, and I'm going to go into the uh, oil pan measurement and how I come up with clearances and the modification I had to do real quick. 